I love cookbooks. Anyways, I'm gonna try to keep this video short, sweet, and to the point. This video is going to be all about my three favorite cookbooks for beginner cooks. Whether you just started culinary school, you're an avid home cook, or an already semi-versed prosumer, these three books are going to be helpful for you. All right, so the way I'm gonna lay this video out is I'm going to tell you my three favorite cookbooks for beginner cooks, and then give you a very, very brief summary, three reasons why I think it's really good for a beginner specifically, and one thing that can be improved in the book. Again, all in my opinion. So the first of the three on the list is Roughage by Ab Abra Barons. Abra? Abra? I'm gonna say Abra. So written in a Midwestern perspective by chef and farmer Abra Barons, Roughage is going to be your go-to produce bible. But don't trip if you're not from the Midwest, the information in this book stands true for all regions, west coast, east coast, down south, wherever you are. The book opens up with kitchen basics, talking about all things from beans to vinaigrettes to sauces. After that, each chapter is divided up by vegetables, so each vegetable has its own chapter. So the first reason I think this book is great for beginners is kind of like exactly what I just said. Each chapter is dedicated to one vegetable, so you're going to learn a buttload of information about each vegetable. So it really allows you to focus in on one vegetable, not get confused by other things, and sort of just really learn about said veg. So the book is set up very organized and the information's easy to go back to and recall. Reason number two. So at the beginning of each chapter, you're going to find a chart. That chart's gonna tell you how to store and how to buy each vegetable, i.e. what to look out for when buying your vegetables, what to look for, what temperature they thrive most at. Also at the bottom of the chart, there's a section on general notes answering other questions like how to wash the vegetable, cleaning tips, why certain varieties might be certain colors, etc. Which takes me to reason number three. Each chapter then moves on to recipes on how to use the vegetable using different techniques. So for example, it'll talk all about beets and then it'll teach you how to steam roast beets, pickle beets, eat them raw, marinated beets, roasting beets, poached beets, baked beets, beet purees, etc. The one thing that can be improved in this book, I think, is that I wish there were just more vegetables. The information in this book is so great, I just like want to learn more about other vegetables. <sighs> Moving on to book two. All right, so this one's awesome. The Stella Culinary School Boot Camp by Chef Jacob Burton. Frankly, we're lucky a guy like Chef Jacob exists in this world of ours, period. The Stella Culinary School Boot Camp is just that. A concise yet very detailed curriculum written by a real world chef with real world experience. And this book is actually just a PDF that I printed off and made look nice. So the three reasons I think it's great for beginners. Reason one, this book is damn near exactly what you would learn in culinary school and then some. I've never been to culinary school, but the reason I know that is because that was one of Chef Jacob's goals when writing this curriculum, to make the information taught at expensive culinary schools available for the rest of us. So this book really does cover the science, the theory, and the technique of cooking sort of in an academic light. This curriculum might be dense. I mean, it, it's literally a curriculum shoved into like 120 pages, but it's all surprisingly super easy to understand. Whether you're starting at zero as a beginner or like a couple notches above that, Chef Jacob does a really good job at explaining the concepts without dumbing them down. Reason number two, this is a fantastic, affordable approach to learn more about cooking. I mean, and the barrier to entry has never been less. This thing was literally 27 bucks online and I still refer to it from time to time and probably give it a read through at least twice per year just to keep everything sharp. Reason number three, Chef Jacob has a pretty dope YouTube channel where he goes over a lot of what he talks about in the book. Like on a whiteboard, he talks about concepts, writes everything out, so you know, it helps visual learners. But also he cooks in a lot of his videos too and makes like, you know, the stock that he talks about, the sauce that he talks about, etc. So I'll link him below, check him out, he's awesome. One thing that I would say could be improved with the culinary bootcamp, being that it's like an academic curriculum, it can be a little dry at times. Now I did print this out in black and white and there are some pictures but the, in, in charts which are fantastic but all in all it could be a little uh, prettier but at the end of the day you know with a work like this I'm not sure that that was the goal. In fact I'm quite certain it was not the goal at all. <laughs> Alright moving on to the last book. Alright so this book is probably the most popular of the bunch. Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat. Yes before the show there was the book but the show is actually pretty well done too if you haven't checked that out. So in the words of Yodam Orolangi, I hope I pronounced that right. <laughs> Salt, Fat, Acid, Heat does a fantastic job at summarizing a giant complex topic that is cooking into four words, salt, fat, acid, and heat. This book is playful, pretty explorative, and it's actually really fun to read. The three reasons I like it for beginners. So I really like the way Samin organized her material here. To contextualize food in terms of its salt, fat, and acid content, and which method and technique of heat you're going to be using is just like a wise way to think about cooking. The one thing I might add to this four letter title is sweet, but that's another video. Number two. So if you're a visual learner, this book is definitely going to be in your wheelhouse. I know I 
I keep talking about visual learners, but I'm definitely a, like a colossal visual learner, so that's that's why. <laughs> even if you're not, you can appreciate this. So what does that even really mean? I feel like there's a useful chart or graphic on every other page in this book. Whether it's understanding how to properly season pasta water, or like how to set up a DIY Bain Marie, this book is full of cool little doodles. Reason number three. Though she's playful and fun, Samin knows Rot is an excellent teacher and a serious cook. You'll learn a ton of information on this and get to apply it in the recipes found in the back of the book. All in all, very well done book and there's a reason why it's a New York Times bestseller. All right, so one shortcoming of the book. I feel like real pictures might be a little more helpful than just like these cute little doodles, but all in all, the doodles do get the job done. I'm just being nitpicky. All right, so as you can imagine, being a cookbook collector, it was really difficult for me to just kind of distill everything down and choose three books. I know there's like a billion cookbooks I don't have, I don't know about. I'm always down to learn about like what you might be reading, what you find to be very valuable in the kitchen, what you think like I might like. So if you have a recommendation for me that wasn't listed, definitely comment that below. I would love to like check out what you're reading. I do have a couple of honorable mentions that I'd like to list out a bit for beginner cooks. I'm not going to talk about them in detail. Maybe if you're curious about them, give it a quick Google, read some reviews, check it out. Maybe check it out at your bookstore, I don't know. But these books are fantastic too. Thank you so much for watching the video if you made it this far. I hope it was helpful. And I hope you dig these recommendations. I know they've been like a blast to read and super helpful for me. Alright, cool. Until next time, peace.